Hi, my name is Martin Rutledge. I'm a neurologist and headache specialist, and I work in Dublin in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I'm going to talk over the next 20 or 25 minutes uh, about monoclonal antibodies and specifically about Arenumab or Amovig. I'm going to talk about the long-term data that we have for Arenumab, the fact that the monoclonal antibodies, including Arenumab, have a very rapid uh, onset. And I'm going to talk about the different patient groups uh, that these medications are really helpful for. So I want to take you back to 2018. And this is when we had uh, the first glimpse clinically of the monoclonal antibodies in practice. Obviously, they had been used in clinical trials. These, remember, these are the first molecular treatments for migraine that we have ever had. The calcitonin gene-related peptide um, is increased in migraine patients, can trigger migraine attacks, and is believed to have a very important fundamental role in migraine for many years. And remember, they developed the CGRP small molecule antagonist first, and for prophylaxis, unfortunately, many of the studies had to be halted because of liver toxicity. But then they developed the monoclonal antibodies for preventative treatment, and the monoclonal antibodies don't have any liver or renal problems. So these monoclonal antibodies are monthly or quarterly injections. Uh, Arenumab is actually every 28 days. They have less side effects than conventional pre preventative treatments and increased effectiveness. The clinical trials across the board have been very positive in episodic migraine and chronic migraine and in many other patients with different forms of migraine. The European Medicines Agency has licensed uh, many of these uh, monoclonal antibodies. And very recently, uh, NICE in the UK, who are right beside us, have approved Arenumab or Amovig after um, a, a, a difficult start because I think they had to apply for, for the first license. But recently, NICE has, has approved Arenumab in the UK. And we have Arenumab and Fremionezumab in Ireland are available in Ireland. So here is just a breakdown. I'm sure you've probably seen slides like this before of the four monoclonal antibodies. As I said, only one, Arenumab or Amovig, binds to the CGRP receptor and the other three bind to the ligand. And they're all slightly different in that Arenumab is fully humanized, whereas Eptonezumab, Fremonezumab, and Galcanezumab uh, are all partly murine antibodies. So Arenumab is the only fully humanized one. Just to <clears throat> recap, so that everybody uh, is on the same page, if we break down primary headache disorders, they're broken down into chronic headache disorders and episodic headache disorders. And the differentiation factor is 15 days per month. It's an arbitrary figure. So when we talk about chronic migraine, we talk about more than 15 days a month for more than three months. And when we talk about episodic migraine, we talk about less than 15 days a month for more than three months. So here's the initial data on the responder rates for the CGRP monoclonal antibodies in episodic migraine. And as you can see, overwhelmingly and unanimously, all four uh, are positive in episodic migraine. Placebo is in gray, and the different doses of the different products, arenumab and galcanezumab, are in purple. And you can see the magnitude of difference between placebo and the treatment arms in all of these studies is roughly around the same at about uh, 20 points or 20%. It's the same for chronic migraine. You can see that all of them uh, separate from placebo, and you can see that all of them are positive. Remember, all of these studies were over 12 weeks or three months or four months or six months. So all of these agents work very quickly. So in terms of uh, the UAE and Dubai, I know that now you have the 140 milligram Arenumab pen available, uh, and we've been using the 70 milligram and the 140 milligram auto ejector in Ireland uh, since uh, 2019. And uh, it's been very helpful to have the 140 milligrams because most of our patients are taking 140 milligrams. So here are the results more targeted now for Arenumab or Amovig uh, in all of the clinical studies so far. So you have episodic migraine pivotal studies and you have the chronic migraine. And all of these 
uh, studies were positive. Again, like with all of the other CGRP monoclonal antibodies. So across the entire clinical program, we've got statistically significant uh, results. Uh, this was the clinical trials in terms of episodic migraine and chronic migraine. Um, the phase two, the Liberty trial, uh, the phase three, Arise and episodic migraine. And again, you can see that each dose of Arenumab or Amovig separates from placebo. And these are only after a number of weeks or a short number of months. Again, the 50% responder rates, this is from monthly migraine days from baseline or from placebo. And as you can see, you've got different doses of Arenumab or Amovig uh, in some of these studies. So the blue and the black boxes represent the different doses. And you can see that the proportion of patients in these short studies, and remember in clinical practice, it usually gets better and better. So in these short studies, you can see straight away that they're all statistically significant. <clears throat> this is uh, an important fact to remember that most patients who failed several other preventative treatments are generally more resistant to further treatments. That's a, a well-known fact in the headache world. So for example, if somebody fails three oral prophylactic medications, and then you try a fourth oral prophylactic medication, they usually fail. However, the CGRP monoclonal antibodies, and specifically here with the Renumab or Amovig, you can show that patients, this is a two-year interim, interim results of the Liberty trial, and this is an open label, open label extension. And these patients have failed between two and four prior preventative treatments. And you'll see from the results that uh, this is the, the methodology first. You've got 125 patients initially in the placebo group, 120 patients in the Arenumab group, and then everybody crossed over to open label for three years. And they all went on to 140 milligrams of Arenumab from weeks 13 to weeks 168. So as you can see, uh, even in weeks 9 to 12, and I think it's really important to point out this fact, that the placebo group is 13.7%. And you can see that probably because they failed so many preventative medications in the past, uh, these patients don't have a high placebo rate. It's much lower than in a lot of the other clinical studies. But you can see that the magnitude of difference between the placebo group and the treatment group, even in weeks 9 to 12, there's a clear separation. If then you go on to look at the 50% responder rate in monthly migraine days uh, in the patients from week 49 to 52, it gets up close to 50%. And then if you look at these patients from weeks 109 to 112, you can see that it's up close to 60%. So clinically, we see that patients get better and better once they've responded to the CGRP monoclonal antibodies, they seem to get better and better. And the number of monthly migraine days gradually reduces over the first one to two years. And this is what we see in, in these open label studies. And this is also what we see in clinical practice. Here's just a more detailed breakdown of the open label aspect of the Liberty trial from year one and year two. <clears throat> Again, you can see that the response gets better and better in those patients who have responded. Here's the 75% responder rates at certain weekly intervals. And you can see that's getting up as far as 30% in the first uh, 109 to 112 weeks. And I think the 100% responder rate, you just have to be a little bit careful how you interpret this because that's just for those three weeks. For example, week 109 to 112, this is the proportion of patients who didn't have any migraine during that, those short period of time. It doesn't mean that they're 100% better, it just means for those three weeks that they had no migraine attacks or no uh, monthly migraine days. So again, you can see that the monthly migraine days reduces gradually over time. And this is just the quality of life um, data for Arenumab for the Liberty trial. And you can see that from week 12 through to week 112, that the situation improves in terms of quality of life. And this is HIT-6, which is one of the commonest quality of life questionnaires that we use. So safety-wise, uh, there don't seem to be any 
significant safety concern, concerns, although you do see that uh, back pain, sinusitis, and nasopharyngitis, and influenza seems to be a little bit more common in the treatment groups. And I think this has probably got to do the nasopharyngitis, influenza, and sinusitis. I think this probably has to do with alteration of the autonomic features of the primary headache disorder, which is migraine. So how quick do these medications work? How quick does Arrhenumab work? Uh, we've seen from a lot of the studies that many of these monoclonal antibodies start working in the first week. We also see this clinically with some patients. They will say to us, perhaps 20% of all our patients will say to us, it was like a light switch. Within the first week, within the first days, they noticed a difference in their migraine. Now, this is not across the board in every patient that you treat with the CGRP monoclonal antibodies, but this is just some of the data from a proportion of the patients, which shows that as early as one week or within a couple of days, some of these monoclonal antibodies, and in this case, it's Arrhenumab and Amovig, start to work. So here you can see that um, the second dose, the 140 milligram dose, separates from placebo even in week one. And again, we see that clinically in patients who will say within the first week, within the first days, within the first month, that they've already known that something has changed and they're responding. This is for episodic migraine, and then this is for chronic migraine. Again, you can see that the separation from placebo is very early in both treatment arms. Again, here is just a, a bar chart representation of that in episodic migraine. So let's talk about the long-term efficacy and safety of Arrhenumab or Amovig in migraine prevention. This is a recently published, in fact, it's just hot off the press in the last uh, couple of weeks. This is the five-year open label treatment phase of a randomized uh, cl clinical trial. And you, on, on the co-authors on this paper, you've got all of the uh, most experienced uh, headache experts from around the world, Professor Goldsby, Masood Ashina, who's the current president of the International Headache Society, David Dodick, who's also a very well-known headache specialist, and Steve Silverstein. So in this open label uh, trial, you had the double blind phase, which was 12 weeks, and then you had the open label uh, trial, which was for five years. What we're looking at is monthly migraine days here, um, monthly um, medication specific days, quality of life questionnaires, uh, and 50% and 75% responder rates. So remember, we have a 12 week randomized double blind control trial, and then we have an open label trial for five years. And we just have this data. Uh, in the last week or two. So again, you can see that of the 388 patients, or 83 patients who were enrolled, I think 215 of them finished the trial after five years. Uh, and that's a pretty good number if you think about the patients, if maybe 30% don't respond to the CGRP monoclonal antibodies, and perhaps a couple of percent stop because of side effects. Uh, so that's a pretty good number a little bit over 200 patients out of a starting of 383. But as you can see, the changes in baseline and monthly migraine days gradually gets better. And this is uh, in a group of patients um, who started with just a 12-week trial, who've now gone on and been followed in the open label phase for five years. Again, you can see that the monthly specific acute migraine medication continues to reduce, and we're now at weeks 264 and 268, which is five years. And here's the overall conclusions. Uh, it looks like Arrhenumab or Amovig treatment was associated with reductions in migraine frequency and improvements in quality of life questionnaires, and that was maintained for five years. So of the 400 patients who received more than one dose of Arrhenumab or Amovig, uh, there didn't appear to be binding antibodies or neutralizing antibodies are probably more important in very many of these patients. We only have three patients who had actually developed neutralizing uh, activity in terms of their, of, in terms of the monoclonal antibody. So that's quite a, that's less than 1% over a five year period. So this is a slide which really is an overview uh, of Arrhenumab or Amovig uh, over the last three to four years in terms of the number of patients in clinical trials and the number of patients 
who've been followed up, who've been on arenumab. Uh, you can see that very few patients stop because of side effects on the right-hand side. It's probably around 2% in the clinical trials. In our practice, it's probably around 3%. And you can see with that, with arenumab or Amovig, you've got several thousand patients who've been enrolled in studies and have been followed up. I thought this slide was really important to uh, include because it talks to the metabolism of monoclonal antibodies in general. And you can see that there's very little hepatic or renal metabolism with monoclonal antibodies. Now, this is really helpful in the clinical context because it means that you can use monoclonal antibodies in many different medical conditions and there won't be interactions with other oral medicines. So if you think about uh, concomitant disorders or drugs such as cardiovascular disease, uh, high blood pressure, stroke, angina, uh, all the neurological disorders such as epilepsy, uh, essential tremor, Parkinson's disease, um, some of the psychiatric disorders, and many of our patients suffer with depression or with anxiety and are on multiple medications, and also medications for asthma or for non-headache chronic pain or for irritable bowel syndrome. So basically, there are practically no interactions between the CGRP monoclonal antibodies and other oral medications that are used for other medical purposes. This is really, really helpful in clinical practice. And when you look at medication overuse uh, and you look at patients, this is another point that I think is really important. It appears from the clinical trials with Arenumab or Amovig and many of the other monoclonal antibodies that there's no detoxification necessary uh, in patients with medication overuse. So in other words, like the onobotulinum toxin A trials, you're able to continue to give patients whatever painkillers that they need, and yet the monoclonal antibodies will gradually reduce the amount of specific migraine medications that patients are using. And this will convert patients from medication overuse or the practice of medication overuse uh, back to patients with episodic migraine, hopefully with no medication overuse. Here's, here's again the immunogicity that we talked about earlier and the neutralizing antibodies is only a very tiny percentage. And I'm not even sure clinically if these patients stopped responding to Arenumab or Amovig. This is a really important slide. And I think this is the reason why these CGRP monoclonal antibodies are gonna take over. Um, we're talking here about the numbers of patients that you're uh, needed to treat before you cause them side effects or you cause them harm. So really what we're looking at is the LLH. Now the LLH, is the likelihood of being helped or being harmed. So on that bottom line, you'll see that LHH or LHH is, needs to be higher in, in patients. So what you want, you don't want a low number for LHH, you want a high number. So if you look at topiramate in the episodic migraine studies and in the chronic migraine studies, you can see that the number is two or three. So it means that if you give topiramate to patients, then every two or three patients, you're likely to give them significant side effects rather than helping them. If you compare that to arenumab in this slide in episodic and chronic migraine, it looks like you have to give 143 to 167 patients uh, arenumab before you give them side effects that will be significant. So again, this is a really important slide, and this is one of the reasons why these monoclonal antibodies are going to become more and more widespread. So this is one of my three or four last slides. Um, and thanks again for your attention. So these are the American Headache Society criteria for offering patients migraine preventative treatment. Now, we don't exactly offer uh, migraine preventative treatment for patients who have two or three or four migraine days per month and 25 crystal clear days per month. We would tend to only offer preventative treatment to patients who have in the region of six to eight migraine or headache days per month or more. So we would say moderate frequency episodic migraine or in patients who have significant disability. But I just thought this was an interesting uh, presentation from the International or the American 
Headache Society from 2019, were slightly more conservative in offering patients uh, preventative treatments. Here's the American Headache Society indications for indicating or starting uh, treatment with the CGRP monoclonal antibody. So if somebody has relatively low to moderate frequency episodic migraine, they need to have some disability and failed two oral preventative medications. If somebody has moderate to high frequency episodic migraine, that's somewhere between eight and 14 days per month, then they don't need to have disability and they need to have failed two preventative treatments. And then for people with chronic migraine, it can be either an oral preventative medication or on a botulinum toxin A. And uh, again, I wonder whether these criteria are going to be modified as the years pass, because it means that you have to go through a number of oral preventative medications or on a botulinum toxin A before prescribing a CGRP monoclonal antibody. Here are the European Headache Federation recommendations for the use of CGRP monoclonal antibodies in episodic migraine or chronic migraine. So for episodic migraine, you need to discontinue oral preventives before starting a CGRP monoclonal antibody. I personally think that's a little cruel. And they're saying that you have to have two preventative treatment failures. And in chronic migraine, you can use the CGRP monoclonal antibodies as add-ons uh, to onobotulinum toxin A treatment or the oral preventives. That's what we do in Ireland currently. We have some patients perhaps on topiramate and on a botulinum treatment every three months, and then we add the CGRP monoclonal antibodies with the hope of discontinuing some of the treatments down the tracks. And they've recommended here that perhaps consider discontinuing a monoclonal antibody after six to 12 months. We tend not to do that. We tend to wait at least one to two years. So these are the conclusions of the American Headache Society and the European Headache Federation. And basically what they're saying is the monoclonal antibodies are generally positive. Uh, we have seen perhaps a positivity rate uh, in the region of 60% for these monoclonal antibodies and probably 3% stop because of side effects. And we think that they're probably going to replace some of the oral preventative medications, hopefully as the years go by. Thanks very much for your attention.